It's World Consumer Rights Day, being observed under the theme, Making Digital Marketplaces Fairer Through Access, Security and Protection, and with the growing use of digital platforms. Comes the need for consumers to exercise more responsibility by carrying out the necessary due diligence. Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson and Minister Carl Samuda will share more with us later in the show. Thanks for making it Jamaica Magazine. Also in our program, crime fighting and capacity building measures by the Ministry of National Security, facts on the national identification systems, and it all unfolds right now. The National ID system will register your picture and fingerprint. It will not need an iris scan unless you don't have a fingerprint and will only take a footprint if you can't give an iris scan or a fingerprint. This will help people with disabilities to get a National ID. NITS is about inclusion, not exclusion, protecting the rights of all Jamaicans. Get the facts at nidsfacts.com. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, March 15. A national closed-circuit television CCTV system is now in place. Dubbed Jamaica Eye, the island-wide surveillance system will monitor public spaces and allow the security forces to provide coordinated responses to incidents. The digital platform was launched on Wednesday by the Ministry of National Security as part of its crime-fighting measures. It connects government CCTV systems already installed in Kingston, Montego Bay, Mandeville, Ocho Rios, Maypen, and Negril, along with private feeds of public spaces. Portfolio Minister Robert Montague says Jamaica Eye is a game changer. The advancement in digital technology through the Jamaica Eye initiative will allow our police and army to cover more areas. It will be a force multiplier. $181 million has been spent so far to set up the Jamaica Eye platform, which has one control center and five monitoring centers, streaming the 180 cameras already installed. Minister Montague says the people monitoring can only observe and will have no access to the feed. Everyone working at the control center has already been vetted to the highest level. Every activity in the control center will be recorded and therefore it can be audited. There is a rigorous audit regime because we want to protect the integrity of the Jamaica Eye. The security minister says the aim is to have 800 feeds connected to the Jamaica Eye platform. He is calling for more private partnership from citizens with digital CCTV feeds. Normalcy returned to classrooms across the island today as teachers ended three days of industrial action. The educators had been protesting government's offer of a 16% wage increase to be spread over four years, as well as a decision to make retroactive payments for year one in this March pay cycle. They agreed to restore normalcy at the end of a meeting involving the Jamaica Teachers Association and representatives from the Ministries of Labor, Finance and Education yesterday. After more than six hours of deliberation at the emergency conciliation meeting, the parties signed a heads of agreement which also stipulates the resumption of wage negotiations at the local level this Friday. It was also agreed that teachers would not be paid the 5% retroactive salary increase for fiscal year 2017-2018, unlike other public sector workers whose unions have already accepted the wage deal. 1,500 students will see their nutritional needs being met at school as a result of a $4.5 million donation this week. The money is being provided by Restaurants of Jamaica to support the Education Ministry's National School Feeding Program through Nutrition Products Limited. Marketing Director of Restaurants of Jamaica, Tina Matalon, says the donation is part of the brand's Ad Hope program. Ad Hope is actually a part of a global initiative by Yum Restaurants, our franchisors, to feed the world basically and to eradicate hunger through world food relief. So it is a first step for us in this initiative to add hope to Jamaica through the KFC Add Hope program and Restaurants of Jamaica is very proud to take this first step. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed has welcomed the donation. 
He says it will add to the ministry's plan for reviewing the national school feeding program to promote health consciousness among students. So many of them do consume at least half of their daily meals at our various institutions. And indeed for some, what we provide them in our schools are the only meals that many of them provide because we still have to recognize the high levels of poverty that we have in our country. So the nation today uh, will go far away in advancing this effort. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation has passed a resolution for the twinning of the city of Kingston with Miramar, Florida in the United States. The city of Miramar is home to a large Jamaican diaspora and the resolution states that it and Kingston share deep cultural, creative and historic ties. They have agreed to pursue and solidify this relationship through various initiatives. Councillor for the Stony Hill Division, Tasha Schwab, who moved the motion, says there are substantial benefits to be gained. We have so much to share, so much to learn from each other. As said before, it will provide us opportunity to learn best practices in disaster management and mitigation. It is a way for us to exchange our sporting activities, our youth activities, art, culture, food, music. The resolution is to be sent to the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development for support. It was passed by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation at its meeting on Tuesday. During the sitting, newly elected councillor for the Norman Gardens Division, Jacqueline Lewis, was sworn in. The National Aquatic Centre at Independence Park has received an upgrade amounting to just over $27 million. Sports Minister Olivia Grange officially reopened the upgraded facilities on Wednesday. It comes just in time for the centre's hosting of this year's Carifta Swimming Championships, which began today. The work entailed the changing of the filters, the complete overall of the diving facility and extensive upgrading of the swimming pool. Starting blocks and timing pads were installed, all designed to ensure that our hosting of the Carifta Games will be up to world class standard. Minister Grange commended the Sport Development Foundation, Independence Park Limited and the Aquatic Sports Association of Jamaica for the work. And finally, the Westmoreland Health Department is implementing a rodent control program to prevent any outbreak of leptospirosis cases in the parish. The initiative was spurred by evidence of an increase in suspected cases of the disease in 2017. Health Promotion and Education Officer Gerald Miller says while the numbers remain within endemic levels, a decision was taken to take proactive measures to protect citizens. A progressive public education and sensitization intervention is being implemented with targeted focus on sugarcane cultivating areas. Because what we had picked up, the, the cases that were reported to us, suspected cases that were reported to us were concentrated in that area. So what we had done was to make sure we are targeted in our approach in beefing up the education in these areas so we can minimize the likelihood of persons getting leptospirosis. Mr. Miller says consultation with residents revealed that during cane harvesting time, rats tend to migrate from the fields to their homes. Residents and farmers are therefore being sensitized on measures to keep their surroundings secured. Meanwhile, Chief Public Health Inspector Steve Morris says the wider parish is not being ignored, telling the JIS that support is also being sought and measures being explored to similarly keep infection levels low in the township of Savlamar. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.
Part of government's growth agenda is to build the capacity for law enforcement agencies to effectively fight crime and to reduce lawlessness. The government has put funds in place to support this plan, as well as partnered with international agencies for additional support. Here are the allocations and projects to be undertaken in the 2018-2019 financial year. The Ministry of National Security is getting a $14.9 billion increase in its estimated allocation for the 2018-19 financial year. Approximately $78.5 billion is estimated to finance the ministry's operations. Of that amount, $66 billion will be spent on administrative expenses under the recurrent estimates. The allocation includes $23 billion for the ministry's operations, $35 billion for the police department, $7 billion to the correctional services, and $741 million to the Institute of Forensic Science. Also included in the overall estimates are $11 billion to undertake government-funded capital projects and $1.4 billion to carry out other programs funded by Jamaica's multilateral and bilateral partners. The drive to increase mobility, develop infrastructure and expand technology will continue with funds from the Capital A estimates. On the Jamaica Defence Force side, $1.3 billion has been set aside to purchase vehicles. To facilitate the purchase of two surveillance aircraft, approximately $3.8 billion has been assigned to facilitate the purchase of two surveillance aircraft. Other undertakings will see $1.6 billion being used to facilitate construction and improvement works at the military base, with another $1.8 billion to implement cybersecurity initiatives. For its $2.4 billion, the Ministry of National Security will use $380 million to implement cybersecurity initiatives. $1 billion will be used to buy motor vehicles and bikes for both the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Department of Correctional Services. To continue the upgrading of radio networks and the supply and installation of CCTVs, $380 million has been set aside. And to facilitate the build-out of new infrastructure and the rehabilitation of police stations and correctional facilities, $566 million have been earmarked. When we acknowledge that there are intersections and we are interconnected and we work together, we can achieve great things. And so several projects will continue in the new fiscal year with support from our bilateral and multilateral partners. Targets under the five-year Justice, Security, Accountability and Transparency Project, JSAT, will include classrooms and dormitories at the National Police College being rehabilitated and equipped, training of personnel and supply of equipment to counter corruption, and installing electronic case management system. The European Union will provide grant funding of $198 million, while the Government of Jamaica will contribute $81 million. Social intervention programs under Phase 3 of the Citizen Security and Justice Program CSJP will receive over $1 billion from funding partners. Among the objectives for the new fiscal year are to train 100 community parent trainers, provide violence interruption services in 40 communities, construct one community centre, provide vocational skills training for 474 beneficiaries, and provide on-the-job apprenticeship and internship to beneficiaries. CSJP3 has been operating since 2014, with completion set for November 2019. In the meantime, government will continue its strategic plans to rehabilitate and reintegrate local offenders and persons deported to the island. The 2018-2019 financial year will see $6.6 billion being spent to improve service delivery to deported migrants, develop a framework to measure the level of reintegration among deported migrants, and carry out a public education campaign for deportees. In addition, government will seek to revise the national deportation policy, develop and submit to cabinet a reintegration and rehabilitation strategy, and prepare a strategy that will include returned migrants in the local sustainable development planning process. The Ministry of National Security, making more resources available to crime fighters, while embarking on a number of programs to achieve social development and maintain law and order in the 2018-19 fiscal year. It's been 11 months. Seven years. Twelve years. 
since I became the most important person in the world. There's a big responsibility for Nose. Her future is in I hands. I have to tell him and show him that he is my number one. I want to prepare them for life's journey. So as them grow, them know the difference between right and wrong. I got to make sure that I keep him out of bad company. Because if I don't raise him right, the streets are going to raise him. I feel, she feel. If me stumble, him fall. Knowing I'm responsible for their future, and they're responsible for Jamaica's future. So I won't give up, or allow her to quit. I'm going to make sure I'm safe on the street time now. Me prefer to tell them no now, than watch them regret it later. Because to the world, I'm just another person. But to my child, I'm the whole wide world. Talks on the National Identification System's NIDS are gaining momentum with the hosting of several town hall meetings across the island. As a result, the public has a clearer understanding of the process that will take place during the implementation phase. We continue the conversation with information you need to know. The government is moving towards implementing a national identification system needs that will become the primary source for identity assurance and verification of all Jamaican citizens. The NIDS will establish a reliable and accurate database and provide each individual with a legal identity. Citizens by birth or persons ordinarily resident in Jamaica will be issued a National Identification Number NIN and a National Identification Card. A NIN is from cradle to, to death. Upon death, it is retired in the system but it is never used again for anyone else. To receive this card and facilitate the data collection process, persons will be asked to provide key information. Information required includes your name, date of birth, address, email and phone number. In addition, your photograph and fingerprint will be taken. The biographic and biometric information are mandatory for the Identity Verification Database. However, it's voluntary for individuals to provide information on their place of employment, profession, family status, education, and religion. So what will not be collected? DNA will not be collected. Let me just mention quickly that financial information will not be collected either. Political affiliation and sexual orientation is, is omitted, and it states so in the bill. The following documents will be required where applicable once enrollment begins in September 2018. If somebody refuses to sign up for the NIDS, there won't be a penalty in the sense that they will not, there is no punitive measures outlined in the bill that is before Parliament. The National Identification Card will display your name, nationality, place and date of birth and address. The card will also bear a unique nine-digit number. The numbers will be randomly selected and bear no relation to your date of birth or sex. The nine digits are in keeping with the same number of digits in the tax registration number TRN and also to fit into systems that are already configured to accommodate nine digits. We wanted to facilitate a situation where there would not be this enormous retrofitting. The, the initial ID is free and if you do lose your ID, there will be a cost to replace it initially. The National Identification System will give the government an authoritative position to be able to identify its citizens. It will also provide accurate data for national planning, eliminate multiple government-issued IDs, and create a shared data system within ministries, departments, and agencies of government. NIDS will seek to eliminate multiple identities and identity theft, strengthen immigration and border control, and ensure public and national safety. It will also improve the country's international standing and credibility. Once we put this in and all of us have our national identification numbers and cards, there is no question who we are. So when you're doing business with an overseas entity or locally, um, the, it, it is giving us as the people of Jamaica and the country far more credibility in the international sphere. The benefits to citizens are many. 
In addition to the One ID, One Identity, it will enable better delivery of service by the state and the private sector. If you look at countries who are progressing and are trying to move into the digital age and give better service to their citizens, you have to, as a criteria, have a way of identifying your citizens. For example, how many people need welfare in this particular parish? How many kids need PATH? Is there duplication among people accessing government benefits? Is there a better way of assessing the people in a particular area in terms of are they accessing enough benefits? So that is the idea. So it's a holistic development of doing business, making it easier to do business, giving you a confirmed identity. And what of the private sector? A key component is that it will support the Know Your Customer requirements for banks and other businesses. This is going to enhance that tremendously and allow them to have better, um, be able to, to negotiate with their correspondent bankers much better. As for the benefits to the government of Jamaica, this range from efficiency and cost savings to simplified documentation, streamlining of business processes, and facilitating the public sector modernization process. The project is a national identification system project, but it's going to have a huge positive impact in the re-engineering of a lot of processes within the government of Jamaica, and as a result, make us far more efficient. But what are the security measures that will be put in place to protect the national identification system? One is that the information captured will be secured and stored on a national civil and identification database. The experts will take it from here. We are putting in place fit for purpose data security and usage policies. We are also putting in place fit for purpose based on international standards, physical security to protect our data center. Our data, let me say our data, our data will be stored in the government of Jamaica data center. So we are spending a lot of money, there's a lot of infrastructure putting, being put in place, and we are ensuring that all access to data is managed, is audited, and is controlled. The National Identification and Registration Authority Bill NERA, which is now before the House of Representatives, has also included provision for penalties if breaches or abuse of data do occur. The bill is very clear and the bill has a, a section that focuses on the punitive measures that the government will take up to $4 million and four years in prison if you abuse the data, especially for persons working within the database management organization. Some things you should note are that Access to your data must be initiated by you. The agencies cannot go on the system and download. You can't browse my information. If I am, uh, my data is on the system, nobody can go and browse on and see what is there. Um, the police cannot ha access the data without a um, court order, and that is in the bill and external agencies and foreign governments who cannot just go and access the information. The Registrar General's Department will be transformed into the new authorized body to administer the National Identification System. The name will be changed to the National Identification and Registration Authority, NERA, and will fall under the office of the Prime Minister. The functions of the RGD, that is the Civil Registry, will continue within NERA, and then NERA also has the responsibility for identity management. A national rollout of the National Identification System is expected for April 2019. And we are confident that when the project is implemented, all of our lives will be better and more secure and safer. As people come onto the system, as the system becomes more trustworthy, as Jamaicans develop more confidence in the system, the policymakers will eventually move to a point where it becomes one ID. We feel honestly that it's going to be a game changer in a positive way for Jamaica.
did you know that in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers? The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate with support from UNICEF. Jamaica is poised to take advantage of the emerging digital economy due to its telecommunications infrastructure and high mobile phone penetration. In recent years, internet shopping has been on the rise, with consumers increasingly using their mobile devices for various online shopping and digital transactions. On this World Consumer Rights Day 2018, the theme is making digital marketplaces fairer with greater access, security, and protection. Consumers now have a larger marketplace within which to conduct business and are readily conducting business in this digital economy. However, with additional choices comes the need for consumers to exercise more responsibility by carrying out the necessary due diligence when using digital platforms. This is of particular importance when conducting cross-border transactions as the rules and responsibilities of utilizing this space still requires more legislation and clarity. Therefore, while we embrace the vast potential for economic growth, we also urge consumers to be vigilant while exercising their choices. Today, Jamaica joins the rest of the global community in observing World Consumer Rights Day 2018. Happy World Consumer Rights Day, Jamaica. The Ministry of Tourism has introduced the new Tourism Workers' Pension Scheme, joining the Ministry's Awareness and Sensitization Seminars at the Montego Bay Convention Center, Friday, March 16, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Tourism sector workers, come out and learn more about the benefits of the new pension scheme. For more information, contact Janelle Ray Bowie at 876-920-4926-30 or send her an email at janellerayboy at mot.gov.jm. We have come to the end of our show, but certainly not the end of our connection. Just click on our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you are online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine, jis.gov.jm, or via tweet at JIS News. Do join us again tomorrow for another program. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.